This is the craziest shit I've ever seen. Usually I don't even cover captures, but this is like, this is intense. Thank you to all of our new supporters who joined us. Since the last time that I've been here, we've had a few people join. Um, So I'm just going to give a shout out to Mary Jo and Sam, who are our newest Supremos, and then Tamara and Sable, who are our newest Small Tacos. So thank you so much, guys. Um, And then this week, I know I did a shot for Carmen, but I didn't see that she had requested one. Um, So this is Carmen's requested shot. Um, She just recently joined as well. So what's up, everybody? We will do that today. If you are a new Supremo, please make sure to put your requested surprise shot in Discord as soon as you get in there. So that way um, I see it for when it's your turn. Okay. Surprise shot. Surprise shots. We don't know what they are because they're a surprise. So cheers, y'all. Yes. Cheers, Carmen. Cheers, Carmen. Man, y'all are too easy. Oh, that was really good. Mm-hmm. What was it? That was kind of tasted like cherry. It was, it's called Peach Death. It's peach schnapps, vodka, and amaretto. Mm, that was good. Mm-hmm. Tonight, we're going to Friday, August 30th, 1985. And leading up to this day, the day of his capture, looking back on it now through all the newspaper archives, you could see that he was about to get captured. The whole state of California was looking for this guy. Everybody. Because he's he's hitting houses all in the same area. Like, yeah. s- like within a square mile. And he's getting away with it for because now. he walks with the devil. And he's loving it. And his whole goal was to become more infamous than Jack the Ripper and he did for a little bit at least. Yeah. To the state of California maybe. Mm. Friday, August 30th, 1985. He's on a Greyhound bus. He knows the heat is on him. They don't know his name yet, but they will in the next 12 hours because the last car that he dropped, they lifted fingerprints and positively identified this guy. But nobody knows that yet. He's on a Greyhound bus because he just needs to take a break and he's going to Tucson, Arizona. He wants to see his brother, which we talked about his older brother. He gets there to Arizona. The brother wasn't in town or wasn't there at the house. Mm -hmm. So he's at the Greyhound bus station and he starts noticing cops. Cops, plain clothes, cops, undercover cops, real cops. They're at the bus station because there might be a chance that he's going to go see his brother. Mm. So somehow... Maybe they weren't waiting for him. Maybe they were waiting for the characters from Rat Race to come and get the winning ticket. Somehow Richard Ramirez avoids these cops and Mm -hmm. And he gets spooked, so he gets back on a bus. Now, the bus takes an overnight trip back to L.A. And at this point, what he does not know is that, and before, this was in every paper. Well, it's a good thing he didn't end up on the bus with the guy that beheaded the guy in Canada. Vince Lee. Yeah. Up until this point, this has been in all the papers. Oh, which that looks isn't nothing that... like him. It looks like Michael McDonald in, in character, like if he's playing Stuart with dark hair. So he's getting away because it's not not him. But little did he know when he got back on that bus to go to L.A., the cops had lifted prints. And he doesn't know at all that now, August 31st, 1985, his actual face is on every single newspaper in the country. The first page, his actual actual oh, photograph. that's him. From a previous booking. He's on the front page. He of, is on the front page with his real photo. He's on the front page with his real photo. Front page of the Los Angeles Times. Front page of every newspaper in California. And he is just wooly dooly riding back on a Greyhound bus to LA listening to his heavy metal on his Walkman. Mm. None the wiser that in every news rack in California is a picture of this man's face. They used a mugshot photo from 1984. His face is on every effing paper. Even the Spanish papers. Like every paper, you know? Everyone is looking for this guy. And he has no idea. He has no effing clue. Because before it was just this. You know, yeah, whatever. It doesn't yeah. look anything like him, really. It's like whatever. But now, not even 12 hours later, every paper has his actual photo. And he has no idea because he's not even in town. Mm. He's on a bus back to L.A. Got it. So let's go to South Town Avenue. He gets off of that bus and he notices a lot of cops. But they're all looking for buses going out of town. No cop has thought he was on his way back into town. They're all checking the outward Outbound. traffic. Mm. Exactly. Makes sense. 
he gets off of the Greyhound bus and he finds himself at South Town Avenue in Los Angeles. So we're going to there right now. And trust me, this story is intense, man. I believe it. Mm -hmm. Every episode has been. Wow. So this is where he finds himself right here. He sees some cops. He has no idea that they're looking for him. Not only that, the whole freaking state of California is looking for him. So he returns to L.A. 725 a.m. It's a Friday. The cops were swarming the station. He sneaks out the back and he's like, holy shit, I hope they're not looking for me. And then he kind of brushes it off. He has no idea his face is plastered on every newspaper linked to 14 murders. Police at this point were posted up at every gas station in L.A., every gas station. And there were flyers of his actual face in every gas station, every bus terminal, all over every freaking wall and window in Los Angeles. This guy had single-handedly terrorized this entire city. Mm. And and his time has come. Yeah, The cops were actually working with the Chevron Corporation to mass disseminate flyers. Like Chevron, like gas? Yeah, to all the gas stations. They okay. printed millions of flyers. Wow. Literally everyone at this point knows what this guy looks I like. I wonder if anyone retained any of those flyers. Hmm. Like what did they do with all of them when they were done? They just burn them, throw them away, recycle them, Probably them as toilet them away, paper. But yeah, I wonder if anyone has one of those old flyers. San Francisco Police Chief Cornelius Murphy said, quote, he's going to have to buy gas somewhere. That's a strong name. Cornelius. Yeah. She's reading again from Philip Carlo, the Night Stalker. From author Philip Carlo. He was not spotted by the police, but he saw plain clothes cops all over and quickly left the terminal, having no idea his picture was on the front page of every Los Angeles newspaper. And at that very moment, people in every community in L.A. were staring at his mugshot in the paper, trying to see some sign of the beast that lived behind those eyes. Mm. He has no idea. He goes to South town, walks in an alley, buys a nickel bag of pot, starts smoking a joint, and he walks into the local liquor shop, Mike's Liquor Store on South Town Avenue. He buys some coffee and a donut. Like, nothing happened. In the uh, Casual. Not, casual. He has no effing idea. So this is going to get effing crazy, because obviously he's just going to be like, you caught me, and then, you know, I'll wait till the cops get here. Yeah, totally. As Seems he, like his speed, yeah. He, he just bought his coffee, he just got his donut, he's walking out of of Mike's liquor store in South Town Avenue and something catches his eye. It's an old woman who was staring at him. Uh-oh. It's an old elderly woman. She recognized. Mm. Now, I want to say... She better red recognize. The population in this, around this area is mostly Hispanic. Mm. See. So, which is why you're going to hear this word a lot, what she says. This lady catches his eye. Like, why is this old bitch staring at me? And he looks at her face and it's just like... Fear, but not, it's more like fear and anger. And then all of a sudden she raises her right hand and points at him. This old lady, wise beyond her years, points at him as he's walking out. Like, what the fuck are you pointing at? She starts shaking her hand. And she says, El Matador, El Matador, El Matador, over and over and over. I thought she was going to say Diablo. Mm. Well, so El Matador. Is that bullfighter? Uh, no, in the in in the Spanish language, at least in this part, it means the killer. I know it, Matador means bull, but when used in this context, it means the killer. Because huh. other people are going to say the same thing. El Matador, because this is mostly Mexican community here. Got it. Okay. And she's shaking her hand yelling at the top of her lungs and he's startled. He's like, what the fuck? Because he's he knows what she means. Well, not until right after because he's walking out and he looks down at a news rack Ooh. and staring right back at Richard Ramirez was himself. And immediately he's like, fuck, that's my actual picture. He, he, he done caught. He takes this newspaper, he grabs it and bolts. And you can still hear that old lady, El Matador, El Matador. Immediately, the owner's calling the cops. 
take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Hmm. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. So that's what she was doing. That's what the old lady is doing. She's exposing him. El Matador, that's him. The cops had found him. They lifted his fingerprints from the la- from the latest stolen car, and they went to the media, mm. and they posted his picture everywhere. They wanted the city of angels to bring down the devil. Ooh, that's a very strong <laughs> phrase. I like that. He grabs this paper and he bolts, and he starts hearing sirens. They're coming Ooh. for him fast. Wee woo. This APB was put out, and at this point, every police officer and law enforcement organization (laughs) in California (laughs) is going to be following this dude. Like, I am not making that up. Every one of them. Every one of them. I (laughs) bet. So he sees his face, and he makes a run for it. Sirens started filling the air like trumpets. Sirens fire trucks, helicopters, the FBI's involved. Everyone, I bet the SWAT teams are SWAT out. SWAT teams, yeah. dogs are barking, and it's going to get more and more and more. And he says, fuck it, I've got to make a break for it. Now, I, I have a question really quick, and I'm not trying to derail the conversation, but I wonder if like other criminals, if they know that this is the main priority of the police and they know what the like manpower it's taking to try and find him, if there is a rise in crime like in the areas where their police are searching like for diverting. Richard. Or, yeah, which is almost like continuing his work for the devil, if you think about it, because by being by being the devil's sacrifice of whatever, like more crime can be committed. Maybe. Just, yeah. an, just a thought. He runs into a neighborhood and and he hops a fence like a jackrabbit. And he heads towards the Santa Ana Freeway. The freeway is busy. It's California. Cars are going by 70, 80 miles an hour. And he is exposed. He's got to cross this interstate. So he... It's like Frogger. He is Froggering. One car swerves because it almost hits him. Oh Shit. Wait, is he on foot or in a, in a car? He's on foot. He is on foot. He is running across the Santa Ana freeway, a, an extremely busy freeway. Dang. And one truck passes him so close that it almost clips his nose and is blaring its horn. Brrr as it's passed the sweat is entering his eyes he can't even see the cop cars are coming down Santa Ana freeway he can hear them the horns everyone driving by they know who to look for they're honking the horns I mean it is crazy he makes it across and he loses the cops he runs through another neighborhood he finds a bus going south and he catches his breath Oh my God. Thank God. Thank God. This bus is going south. All I got to do, go wherever it takes me, get a car, get across the border. Shit. I dodged a mother effing bullet so hard right there. Right away, people on the bus recognized him from the picture on the newspapers and the television and started pointing. The bus stopped and he got off, realizing for the first time, everyone everywhere knew his face. There was nowhere to hide. He sits down and all of a sudden, everyone is just pointing at him, looking at him. El Matador, El Matador, El Matador. Everyone on the bus is pointing at him, staring at him, calling him a killer. Shit. He's lucky he didn't have a weapon on him, I guess. Otherwise, do you think he would have gone on a rampage on the bus? No, he's just trying to get out. He's trying to get to safety. Mm. He finds a drainage ditch. He jumps in it, squats down in this hole and hides, and he starts to think. He then comes up with it. I got to get to Mexico. I've got to get to Mexico. No matter what, I got to get to Mexico and grow my beard out and try to fit in for a little bit until this heats off. If you ever play Grand Theft Auto, this is five stars. <laughs> when, when you hit the fifth star... <laughs> the choppers are following you. Yeah. And the you're, boat's following you. Yeah, every your chance of survival at that point is is very, very minimal. Yeah. You literally have to hijack a jet or something to get away. Yeah. And then parachute. I think you've done that. Yeah. Yeah. In the game. It is. If, if you hit in Grand Theft Auto that five star mark, you done. There's no effing son, way. Son, you done, son. I still need to play that. It's fun. I think they're working on the next Grand Theft Auto. They've been Auto. working on that shit forever. I remember playing the first one. I was the first one in my school to have it, but... <laughs> With your PlayStation? Yeah, it was overhead view. 
It's the first so one. Fun. It's the first one to ever play it. All right. Jesus Christ. If I'm going to make it through this, which, you know, I have done so far. He's got to pray to El Diablo. I've got to make a prayer. Mm. Satan, if there was ever a time that I needed you, it is right now. Please, Satan. Satan, you there? Hello? Can you hear me now? Usually you respond by giving me some sort of emotion or a thought in my head. Maybe. Are you busy? Satan. Try the pager. Shit. He just realizes his dark lord is not <gasps> answering his prayers. He abandoned <laughs> him. <laughs> That's cold. But also, it's the devil. It's like, what can you expect? Yeah. yeah. The devil's like, yo, you got to <laughs> do this shit on your own. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you've been caught. Peace. <laughs> I don't do the whole accountability thing. <laughs> That's the other guy. So he needs a car. He needs a car and he needs to get across to Mexico. He cannot take the bus anymore. He needs to get to Mexico somehow. So let's see if he can do it. He gets up and he starts to walk down a residential street. And just like the bus, as you read that from the Night Stalker book, just like the bus, people are hearing their sirens. People are coming out of their houses and pointing at this guy. I'll the door. <laughs> as he's walking through this Spanish neighborhood, this Mexican neighborhood, they're pointing at him and screaming, El Matador, El Matador. Damn. He's walking through a residential neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> His time is. Ah. <laughs> I know. This is the craziest shit I've ever seen. Usually I don't even cover captures, but yeah. this is like, this is intense. People start looking out their windows, coming out and pointing at them. And then something weird happens that something that even he would never think in the world would happen. People started following him. What? Chasing after him. Three kids. It started with three kids on bikes. They started chasing him. So is he just Damn. like leisurely walking no, or is he running? Now? He was leisurely walking until this. And now he is sprinting. And wow. these kids are starting to chase him. They're going to chase him and Damn. they're going to chase him and capture him. And then people that were outside their houses pointing are now walking behind them, running behind them. Just to make sure them. that they don't get, a, you know, hurt. Yeah. I mean, no, they're running behind them. Wow. No one cares about getting hurt anymore. Everyone is sick of this dude terrorizing them. Everyone is running after this guy. Wow. Isn't that nuts? Yeah. It's almost like that murdered by town thing where like everyone conspired against this one guy. Yeah. He says to these boys. I was thinking the exact same thing, Jen. Quote, get the fuck away from me. He is yelling. He's at, freaking out. He is yelling at kids to get the fuck away from me. <laughs> like, <laughs> But they're not. No one is. No one's scared of him anymore. He's lost all his power. Mm. In the blue sky over East L.A., Richard saw police helicopters searching him out as if they were hungry birds of prey, and he was food. Helicopters, the most they've ever had for any incident in Los Angeles. Overhead, swarming, like bees, swarming. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3. Getting into my sermon here. Oh boy, here we go. I mean, dude, I am not embellishing this. This is what happened. People are pointing. You're going to read some stuff. People are chasing him. They are going to take this guy down. I mean, it is it's nuts. I don't think this has ever happened before. They were so, the whole city was so angry. And it's just amazing to see them all bind together. It almost yeah. reminds me of, this, of the opening scene in Shrek when they all, have, when the town gathers <laughs> with the torches and pitchforks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grab yeah. yeah. your torch and pitchforks. And they're just like <laughs> chasing him down the Road. Uh, I mean, they don't chase Shrek, but like that's what I'm imagining yeah. is happening to Richard. Yeah, Ramirez. yeah. It reminded me of I think the movie is uh, the Night of the Body Snatchers. Oh yeah, we've watched that one when they all point because he's yeah yeah Remember? yeah yeah. And the yeah. faces are like yeah. yeah yeah yeah. These three boys are stalking him on their bikes, yelling at him, and he's like, "Get the fuck away from me!" He bolts off. He jumps another fence and he sees a small grocery store. Now, everyone is still going to follow him. They can't be vaulting fences, but they know where he's going. He's in this parking lot of this 
grocery store and he spots a car that's sitting in idle. The woman inside it is just waiting on her boyfriend. Her name is Manuela Villanueva. She's waiting on her boyfriend and she sees El Matador running full speed at her. She immediately knows who it is, just like everyone else. Every Because this wasn't just in the papers, it was also on the TV. You know, you didn't have Netflix and stuff, so everyone was kind of watching the same thing. Like, no matter what news station, because it was one of those special reports, mm. be on the lookout for this dude. Here's his face. Everyone saw it. Everybody saw it. If they had cell phones back in the day, they would probably do that with the cell phone, the emergency alert thing. Oh, like an Amber Alert. Yeah. Yeah. So Manuela, she's waiting in her car and El Matador is running full speed at her car. She immediately knows who this is, tries to lock her car, and he screams, Matoron, mi mama. Basically, my mother is dead. I need your car. Like that shit was going to work. She knew exactly who he was. And then he's just like, get out. Get the fuck out of the car. Get the fuck out. She started screaming, help me, El Matador, help me, help me. Now, this is in the mid. This is like at your teeter. Harris Teeter or your Piggly Wiggly. Like, l- <laughs> do y'all have Piggly Wigglies? <laughs> There's, there is a, we do have <laughs> a Piggly like Wiggly in town. Left. Yeah, they're going out of business. There, so, there's one, there's one in the next town over and then there's one in like down by the downtown area, but I've never shopped there. She was idling at the front of the grocery store. All the cashiers are seeing it. All the customers coming out. This is a big commotion. He is trying to rip a woman out of this idle car to steal her car. So this obviously did not go well with everybody in the grocery store, okay? She starts screaming, help me, help me. She's pulling this lady's arm, about to rip it off, trying to yank her out the car. All of a sudden, her boyfriend rushes from the bakery. He was in there just getting some some lunch for him. He rushes out. He's a big dude, burly dude. Hey, what the fuck? He runs straight at the car. And then also another man, Arthur Benavides. Now this guy, looked he was a weird looking guy big guy but half of his head his left side of his head was shaven off and the other side was you know had hair he heard the commotion and stepped out of the barber chair i was gonna say was he at, was he at the barber like <laughs> he was getting a haircut and he heard this commotion and saw it and he gets out of his barber chair and he runs he's only halfway through his haircut Dang. and he's now running that would at- be you you'd be yeah. like yeah <laughs> let's do this the barber runs out with his shears. They are going to fucking shear this dude to death. Holy shit. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's time for a trim. All right. At this point, there are the kids, several neighborhoods, cops, supermarket employees, the barbershop employees, the customers, police helicopters, police bloodhounds, FBI, SWAT, and everybody banded together. And they were now stalking the night stalker, right? Damn. <laughs> It's poetic. Yeah. But let ju- poetic justice. Mm-hmm. But let justice roll down like waters and the righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Amos chapter five, verse twenty-four. Can you read the children from playgrounds? Children from playgrounds, supermarket employees behind their counters, and barbershop workers and patrons wielding shears and scissors all found themselves part of a citywide manhunt. Their everyday routines morphed into vigilant pursuits. He bolts into another neighborhood and jumps over another fence. He's now on Perry Street. Oh. The boyfriend who came out of the store from the bakery that was Manuela's boyfriend, and now a guy named Frank Moreno are now now running full speed at this guy. They're not jumping the fences, but they're going around him. They're going to they're going to get this guy. Mm. Richard reached Perry Street and walked into the front yard of a woman who, upon seeing him, began to scream and slammed the front door of her modest house. She, too, hurried to the phone and dialed the police. Richard heard the cacophony of police sirens as a deafening, maddening sound. It was so hot he felt like he was in a furnace, like he was being licked by the flames of hell. Ugh. This woman opens up her door and starts slamming it, getting noise, making noise. El Matador, El Matador. People are coming out, pointing. They see the other neighborhoods I'm surprised running. there wasn't somebody with a shotgun sh- ready to shoot him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised he made it out of this mom scene alive. Yeah. I mean, if they would have had pitchforks. Right. This was a pitchfork situation. Yes. Right. 100%. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt I about can't it. believe he made it out of this ar- this scene mom, alive. Yeah. yeah. So. Sirens, helicopters, fire trucks, cars blazing their horn as they pass by. They know it's him blazing their horn so people know his head starts throbbing. 
ask Satan, where are you? I need you. No response. The sound of terror is in his ears. While at peace, the destroyer comes upon him. Job chapter 15, verse 21. (laughs) I thought it was kind of fitting. I don't know. (laughs) He catches his breath and he's now on Hubbard Street, which is a terrible choice. The revelation thundered down Hubbard Street. Richard Ramirez, identified as the notorious Night Stalker, was one of their own, a Mexican. Like a spark igniting dry tinder, the news blazed from house to house, street to street, leaving behind a trail of shock and whispered conversations. Every corner, every household felt the tremor of recognition and disbelief. He sees that this neighborhood, too, is pointing and starting to chase him. He hops another fence and he ends up in the backyard of Louis Manos, who is full apron, cooking hamburgers on a grill. He's flipping burgers on his grill in the backyard, and this tall, lanky guy wearing all black just jumps over his fence, and immediately, he knew who that was. Mm. Immediately. All of a sudden, flipping burgers, he's hearing sirens, but not thinking about it. He's got the ketchup and mustard on the side table, you know, kiss the cook or whatever. And this guy jumps his fence, and he knows it's the Night Stalker. Immediately. Everyone does. He recognized him, and he ran towards him. He's running towards Richard Ramirez. He's got an iron spatula and he hits him multiple times with a spatula. He's getting beat with a freaking hamburger spatula. Damn. <laughs> Shit. He jumps his fence. In the next yard over, there was a burly Mexican working on his daughter's red Mustang. The man had stepped into the garage just for a second to grab a tool, and he came back to see Richard Ramirez, a night stalker, attempting to steal his daughter's pride and joy. He gets in and puts it in gear, presses on the gas, but all of a sudden, he's got these vice fingers around his neck. This guy is choking him to death as he's trying to steal his daughter's car. The car steers around and crashes into the house's chimney. Richard slinks out the passenger window. And now this guy, as well as everyone else, is now chasing him. He's a Richard is a very fast runner and he can vault fences like nobody's business. So it's, you know, if, if you know that fact, you can see why it takes so long to catch this guy. Yeah. I mean, he basically slinkied his way out of the passenger window of this red Corvette. Right? Like a snake. Yeah. This Which red is Mustang. interesting because who is known to be a snake, but the, the devil. devil. Yeah. Richard runs down the street until he sees Angela De La Torre. She was getting in her car to run to the store to buy candles for her daughter's four-year birthday. She takes one look at him and knows exactly who it is. He approached the car. She has the keys in her hand, and she starts swinging at him. El Matador, El Matador. She's screaming at the top of her lungs. From the Night Stalker by Philip Carlo, wild and frantic, she knew who he was at first glance, recognizing him from the news reports and began to scream, El Matador, El Matador. He demanded her keys, threatening her. She bravely declined. He punched her in the stomach and took the keys out of her hand. Already in the car was Angela's neighbor, who leapt from the front seat and ran back toward the house, taking up Angela's cries of El Matador. Mm. The neighbor across the street that was watering his lawn drops his hose and he runs over there and he starts pulling Richard off. You know, he's trying to grab the keys. He gets the keys and now this guy is trying to throw him on the ground. At this point, Angela's husband, Manuel, comes out. He makes his appearance, but he comes out with a metal pipe and he's going to bash his head in. Richard is in the car. He's trying to leave. At this point, three guys are trying to pull him out and all of a sudden, Manuel says, Get out the way. Let me have a crack at him. Oh. Takes that metal pipe and just with all his might, boom, mm. crack right on the back of Richard's skull. Oh. As hard as he can. Richard almost goes unconscious, but kind of wakes up. Oh, fuck. Somehow he managed to escape again from the passenger window. Wow. What the fuck? He nearly lost it there. He is now stumbling. Looks down the road that he just came from. That's not a viable escape route because it is filled. It looks like a parade. Mm. A parade of people running. It's like a 5K. Literally at the start of the 5K, everyone's there and just fucking take off. The helicopters are coming. He starts running the other way. This guy is not going down without a fight. Mm -mm, Yeah, (laughs) At the same time, in the middle of Hubbard Street, Indiana Avenue, he's still hearing El Matador, El Matador. People are still coming out of their homes, but now they're running after him. 
Cries of El Matador began to echo up and down the block. As Richard ran, he turned around and began sticking his tongue out, hissing serpent-like at his pursuers. With that, the woman began to make the sign of the cross with their fingers. They looked downwards and looked away. He looked, they thought, like a deranged madman, a demon. This is nuts. If you if you really break this down, everyone's screaming El Matador. This guy is, he just got cracked on the head. They're screaming at him, you know, all around him. El Matador, El Matador, pointing at him. And what does he do? Quote, sticking his tongue out, hissing, serpent-like. Oh, I don't like that. Mm. Yeah. They Crazy. start, the women, quote, began making the sign of the cross with their fingers. <laughs> Get away from me! And he's like, it, what the fuck? Have you ever heard it? You know what it makes me think of? Like, one of my favorite books is Dracula. Yeah. And when Jonathan Harker is on the uh, horse carriage to get to Dracula's uh, mansion, he doesn't know where he's going, but everyone in town does. So they make this cross like that, mm. you know, to, like, protect them. And he's wondering what what they're doing that for. Right. And none of them are looking at him. They're just making that cross. Mm. And you got to keep in mind, the Spanish, the Mexican uh, population here, and in very general, Catholic, yeah. very religious. And so... So is he. So it's just crazy because it he sticks his tongue out and he hisses like a serpent. I, I want to, I want to, I like really want to get into his mindset on that. And because yeah. he's just almost got knocked unconscious. He's not, that's just like his reaction. It's like snake jazz. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys see that they found a, um, species of snake that they thought was extinct a whole like no really long time ago and it is a like giant is this tiktok serpent or real news where is it where do they find it i do don't remember it was either south africa i think it was oh. i think it was, it was south america or south africa is this real or tiktok no it's real where'd you find it at online posted to headlines and we'll cover it this week we'll talk about it because that sounds scary i like bigger than an anaconda it was like a giant yes all right well let's take a measurement like a compare. basilisk kind of like a basilisk yeah all right so you see here okay okay you see all right. here a baby. all right mr turtle <laughs> <laughs> you see here an inchworm <laughs> how does it compare <laughs> on that show i was talking about earlier there was there was a person that i was like it looked like a bugle like the chip the bugle chip it was very yeah it was gross anyway go on wait is hbo actually showing yes Showing what? They're yes. not blurring no. this out? No. Blurring what out? The show I was talking about earlier. The H- Naked Dating? Naked Dating. HBO. Dating Naked. What the fuck? It's like yeah, HBO. I would still assume maybe nope. a Have little. Have you never watched HBO? I mean, yeah. Dating Naked. It's like Skinamax. I would definitely not want to watch that then. I agree. Yes, no. Yeah. Does anybody ever watch the Red Shoe Diaries on Skinamax? No. I, is Skinamax a porn site? No. Well, it's, it's Cinemax. Yeah. But at night, they, they do like... Porn. Soft Crunchy porn stuff. for, you know, housewives. All right. At this point, he is coming to still stumbling down the street. These women are all making the cross sign. He's hissing at them like a freaking serpent. Manuel is still chasing him. He throws this metal pipe. It misses him. It's right by his ear. So this is the same metal pipe that he used to hit him. He yeah, threw he at him. Threw at him because Richard Mears is really fast, even yeah. when he's almost knocked out. Should have run from track. Manuel Manuel picked up that metal pipe and got close enough where he could get a good swing and they're running at full speed and he he lifts that bar behind his neck there is no peace for the wicked Isaiah chapter 57 verse 20 crack as hard as he can almost blew out his skull Ramirez falls down Richard went down Manuel stood over him raising the metal bar high above his head go ahead go ahead get up man and you're fucking dead he said get my gun go get my gun he called to Angela (laughs) the beauty of this is real simple it is, if you really think about it, the reason that this is so, such a beautiful ending is because this man, this night stalker, Richard Ramirez, had terrorized LA, the citizens, the city of angels, everyone. They were they were painting their houses different colors. Yeah. Remember we talked about that? Mm-hmm. Changing their locks, buying guns, being fearful. It was the people he was terrorizing. And that's exactly who brought him down. Mm. 
Yeah. That's what's beautiful about this ending. When justice is done, it is a joy to the righteous, but terror to the evildoers. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 15. That's how he was caught. That's pretty wild. That's incredible. Isn't it? Yeah. I mean, holy shit. The people, it wasn't the the cops found him. The detectives and the cops, they put his face out there for the people. Yeah. I can promise you from somewhere up high in the Los Angeles police department, they talked about it. They wanted the people to take him down. Mm. And that's who did it. Yeah. No cop, no no one else. The people he was terrorizing took him down. Mm-hmm. And by the, t- by the time the cops got there, I mean, there was a huge mob. Yeah. Hundreds. Every neighborhood. The kids from original, the bikes, the, the guy with the effed up hair because he jumped out of his barber <laughs> yeah. seat. They were all cheering. They finally got got this guy. No more. No more fear. It was triumph. That's what makes it so amazing to think about, you know? Mm -hmm. It's the people, the ones that he was terrorizing, they stood up to him. Even Angela, he was demanding her keys. No! Mm. You know? So he punches her in the stomach. The reign of terror is over. Yeah, and that's it, man. So he was obviously sentenced to death, but he died? (laughs) Yeah. Right? He died on death row? Yeah. Of old age? No, of uh, medical complication. In 2013, he died. He did marry uh, Doreen, uh, what's her name? Doreen, I can show you her name. Or this woman, very smart woman. She married him because she loved him. Sure. However, I did see I did see some of her old classmates, and maybe they're just saying this, but they said that in, in school she was very lonely. Mm. But this is her right here. She, she loved him. No one knows where she's at now. She said she would kill herself if he got put to death, but he didn't. That is quite the ending. Mm-hmm. To Richard Ramirez. I know, man. I mean, dude, this was eight fucking episodes. What is wrong with me, dude? I mean, what is wrong with me? Jack the Ripper was longer, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. That's it, man. Where's Satan at? He's helped you all those times, but now you're on your own, dude. And he was okay. hissing at these people. Yeah. Holy shit. Like, is that not incredible? It's fucking wild, yeah. actually. <laughs> you know? And it, he just got cracked on the head. So it's not like he probably even thought about doing it. It was natural. It was a natural reaction to do that. Yeah. It's effing crazy, man. Yeah, that is crazy. But. Well, we finally did it. Richard Ramirez. Yeah. So, you know. All right. We t- we've we tackled some big ones this year. Jack mm-hmm. the Ripper, Richard Ramirez. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some big names in true crime. Yeah. So I did. That Manson. was eight yeah. episodes of Richard Ramirez. I know that was too much. Mm-hmm. but No, I think you did a great job with this. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all I got. Somebody sign us off. I'm kind of tired of doing that. All right. Later. Well, until next time. All right. Don't use mine. All right, everybody. Well, thanks so much for joining us today and have a great week. Or maybe I should just do it. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Until next time, good night, you lovely, lovely people. I kind of run this shit.